For how easy this was to make, it should not be this cute. It really shouldn't. <laughs> it is time for part two. So this week I'm gonna be sewing the dress portion of my Rapunzel outfit based off of the concept art from Tangled. For those of you who might not have watched my last video, I personally believe that Claire Keen's concept art, who was a concept artist on Tangled, made the most beautiful costumes and paintings and artwork of Rapunzel that I just tend to resonate with more than what ended up being Rapunzel's costume. Don't get me wrong, I love Tangled. I think it has a beautiful aesthetic. I just really love the concept art. I think there's something special about it. Hey, Editing Brie here. I just wanted to do a bit of housekeeping because while editing, I did a bit more research. So while I am getting most of my inspiration from Claire Keen, I also wanted to give credit to other visual development artists on Tangled who I just thought had beautiful artwork. And those were Lisa Keen, no relation, I believe, and Jin Kim. I would find these images and wonder if they were by Claire Keen, and then I would dig deeper and realize that they were by these two artists. They didn't create the specific designs I'm using as inspiration, but their artwork was really cool and I wanted to show it off and make sure I was giving all the credit to the right people. Oh, also, this inspiration photo that I used in my corset video was actually done by Glenn Keen, Claire Keen's father, which I should have noticed because the signature is different. <laughs> but okay, I think that was everything. Back to the video. Speaking of that, if you did not catch my last video, I'll go back and watch it real quick. It is the corset part of this outfit. So I think if you go watch that, this video might make a bit more sense. Second of all, it's, in my opinion, the best course that I've ever made. So I wanna show it off, go watch it. If you don't know, I learned this on YouTube recently. A couple of people have talked about it. Mood has free patterns and I've tried a couple of them now and they've been great. So I am using their milkmaid dress. I, there's a lot of dresses that are like this out there right now and I've been wanting one for so long and when I found this, I knew I needed to use it for this video. It's so princessy and delicate. Ooh, I'm so excited. But I did make a few stylistic changes, so let's move on to the design phase. Okay, so here are my main points of inspiration from Claire Keen's work, but the last two are what I'm taking most of my inspiration from. The bust part is remaining the same, but I'm going to add a V at center front. I just think that's very flattering. Then for the skirt, since I don't think I'll have enough fabric for my usual very swishy skirt, I'm going to try to do a handkerchief hem. I'm also going to make the sleeves a bit longer just because I usually like them a bit longer around the elbow. And that's all the changes I'm making. And here's what it will look like with the corset. Okay, let's get to sewing. It is another overcast day. Yay. I don't usually complain about it this much, but we only snowed a couple of times this year. And so instead of snowing, it just rained and was overcast most days since January. I'm just a little over it, just a little. So I actually started on this yesterday because everything is cut out. Uh, let me kind of take you through that process because I actually think it ended up being pretty, it turned out really well as far as my yardage goes. So I'm gonna break that down for you really fast. So as a little reminder, here is the fabric for this project, which is a pair of thrifted curtains. So I broke up each curtain into two halves and I saved one half for the skirt piece and the other I used as my bodice and sleeve pieces. I added a few inches to my back pieces because I'm going to add shirring there so that I don't need a closure, per usual.
With the other half, I made sure there was an extra inch for hemming on that last side, but I folded it over once to make sure that it was a perfect square. Then I folded it over once more and I did a circle skirt measurement that added a few inches since I was going to have no closure. You can also find your circle skirt measurement on Mood. This is not sponsored, none of this, <laughs> but I just like all the free stuff that Mood offers. It's nice. I left the bottom edge untouched as that was going to make the handkerchief hem. I did not think, and I didn't even put it in my design because I didn't think I was going to have enough yardage, but uh, I ended up having enough for two handkerchief hems, which I will show you now. Like this. I think it adds a nice amount of volume and it also makes it look longer than it actually is because <laughs> the shortest section is actually quite short, which I, did, I wouldn't have minded normally, but uh, since I am going off of images, I just want it to be a bit longer. All right, <laughs> back to the table. So I started by connecting all the back bodice pieces together, and once they were together, I started the shirring process, which is one of my favorite things to do in sewing. I then connected the front pieces and added the straps. It was then time to add the bust piece. I estimated the correct elastic length across the top of my bust and made a channel large enough to pull the elastic through with a pin.
The last thing I did for the day was prep the sleeves. Since I had cut the sleeves on one of the hemmed edges, I could just go ahead and slip that elastic through and cut out a whole step. Okay, quick break because the tattoos arrived. <laughs> I want to say it's either DIY designer or designer DIY. I know her first name is Orly. Editing me will correct myself if I didn't get that name quite correct. Um, but she talked about how you can tattoo clothing, which sounds so cool. Some of you may recognize this. It is a dress that I thrifted and I kind of opened up the sides and laced it to make it more like an apron and I would actually like to use it as an apron but I've kind of not used it because I wanted to add a little embroidery to kind of zhuzh it up and I've just been too I guess lazy to do it because I know it's gonna take a while. I saw the tattoo thing and I really want a tattoo. <laughs> this. I think she mentioned that as long as you use um, it's a decoupage, mod podge, that's what it is. On it, it will stay for a while slash forever. So let's just quickly do that and I'll show you the finished product when it's all dried and done. I eventually figured out that it would look better sideways and I started placing the tattoo as you normally would, giving it a good 20 seconds before lifting it. I felt like those clear areas didn't pop enough, so I added a very light layer of white acrylic just to make it pop more.
Lastly, I added a layer of fabric Mod Podge and let it dry for several hours. You're supposed to let Mod Podge dry for 72 hours before washing, but I figured I could go ahead and wear it before then. So I decided to shorten the sleeves by a couple of inches because I seem to have cut them just a bit too long. I hemmed the fourth edge of each skirt that I cut and then connected those to the bodice. Hold on. Okay, let's feed the birds. <laughs> I 
think I should be able to add can drive relatively well in a corset to my resume. I think that should be allowed. <laughs> For how easy this was to make, it should not be this cute. It really shouldn't. <laughs> I definitely could have given myself like an extra inch in the bust area, and I could have also made the elastic a lot tighter. But other than that, the fit is mwah. Perfect. The smocking I think is actually really pretty. Look out for a video in the future where I'm pretty sure I'm gonna make a romper and a blouse out of this pattern. I love it. I love it. But that is it for this video. If you enjoyed watching, be sure to like and subscribe as well as comment. All those things really help me out. Since this is our last weekly video, I'll probably see you back here in two weeks. I have a very fun video planned. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you had a good time and I hope to see you back here next time. Bye.